it, this is a a story that um, you may have seen it. It's a Shambhala Buddhism, right? <clears throat> that it's a it's a sec a sect of Buddhism that came out of Tibet, right? And it landed here when it ha landed here in the seventies from Tibet, right? So what happened with Tibet? Why is why did Tibet why is Tibetan Buddhism Shambhala, the invention of Chongyam, Chongpa, Rinpoche. How did it end up here and why am I talking about it? Because there's a massive, massive scandal going on right now. And it started with sexual, uh, the allegations of sexual misconduct by the guru, Sakyong Mipom Rinpoche. As the spiritual leader of the Shambhala Buddhist organization, the man known as the Sakyong encourages others to cultivate kindness that we are worthy and there's a sense of personal uh, dignity. Remarks that are completely at odds with the Sakyong's alleged behavior as outlined in a report by this Halifax woman who decided to look into allegations of sexual abuse in the Shambhala community. I was really hoping that he wasn't part of this. Three anonymous women came forward, one claiming he kissed me and groped me while aggressively encouraging me to come to bed with him. Another alleging, I was sexually assaulted by the Sakyong in the kitchen. A third woman describing an assistant leading her into the Sakyong's bedroom, where he and another woman were on his bed having sex. Wynn claims those who protested were shunned and forced to leave the Shambhala community. It appears he had a very revolving door of lots of women being phoned up, asked to come, him having sex with them, and it going on for however long that he wanted, and then he would callously dismiss them. The guru, whose full name is Sakyong Mipam Rinpoche, is a married father of three. His father relocated Shambhala Buddhism from the U.S. to Nova Scotia in the 1980s. In a statement, the Sakyong admitted, I have engaged in relationships with women in the Shambhala community, adding, I have recently learned some of these women have shared experiences of feeling harmed as a result of these relationships. I am now making a public apology. The statement does not confess to any sexual misconduct. And there's another allegation from a woman who claims the Sakyong sexually assaulted her at a party in Chile in 2002. A claim bolstered by this retired employment lawyer who followed up on Wynn's research by interviewing the complainants and other witnesses. And he took her by the hand and he pulled her into a bathroom. He locked the door and then he sexually assaulted her and he wanted her to have sex with him and she refused and he continued. As the scandal unfolds, the Sakyong has stepped aside, as has Shambhala International's nine-member governing council. These are very, very positive responses in a very short time. The Sakyong. <laughs> Can't make this shit up. It's the Sakyong Mipam. It's a, it's a sect of Buddhism. They teach meditation. And it turns out, right, that that I was involved in Shambhala for many years, right? I had gone to uh, back in like nineteen, the late nineteen nineties, right? I went to Thailand, right, and I there I discovered. Um, I was interested in Buddhism, but there I really discovered it and went a little further and said, "Well, what's all this stuff about meditation? Is it real? Is it fake? Is it is it helpful? Is it?" Is it a religion? I, I wasn't ready to join a religion. I never wanted to be a Buddhist. I wanted to learn about meditation. So Shambhala advertised themselves as a meditation center and sucked me in, right? Now, the biggest part of this story, right? Although the sexual scandal is deep and disgusting and interesting, the real scandal is years and years and years of tax evasion. <sighs> How do I know it to be true? Because I'm going to tell you it's true. Right? Because, guess what? I got kicked out of Shambhala. Right? I got kicked out. Right? I, was a, I was a student there, and I started asking some questions about what I was observing. Mostly, the sexual misconduct was on display. And it wasn't most concerning, because that's something that was so obvious and so in your face that it was almost foolish to think that no one knew what was going on. Right? In my in my eyewitness uh, experience, right? The other part of it was that the guru, Chongyam Chongpa Rinpoche, 
right? The father of Sakyong Mi Pan Rinpoche, the latest scandal, right? Like father, like son, right? The father was a was a was an alcoholic. The guy died cirrhosis of the liver. He drove his car into the front of a building and and paralyzed himself. He married a 16 year old in England. Probably doing a little of this when she was less than 16 in England, below the age of consent, right? And there was another part of it that was very concerning to me is that one of the practices of this sect of Buddhism from Tibet is this practice of envisioning yourself with a 16-year-old virgin. You can't make it up. I, I, never, I never got involved in it because it was advanced teaching. And it's very secretive. Right? And you have to study directly with this guy, Sak Yang. The Sak Yang. Sak Yang. Right? You got to study with the Sak Yang. He's going to teach you about this, this teaching of envisioning yourself with a 16 year old virgin. Right? So, so I started asking questions about it. And I started asking questions about how is it that a, how is it that a teacher in the Buddhist tradition the teachings of the Buddha who said abandon gratification, self-gratification in exchange for enlightenment, how is it that that person could be considered enlightened? And in this community, he is widely considered enlightened. So I started to ask these questions about the alcohol, the alcoholic guru, right? And the son who also showed signs of alcoholism. But again, the father died of advanced cirrhosis of the liver. He was a full-blown alcoholic. Crashed his car into a storefront, paralyzed himself, right? Almost killed the passenger, right? Marries a 16-year-old. So again, I was kicked out. So what did I do? Did I take it like a... Did I take it take it on the chin? Hell fucking no. I sued them. In New York State Dis Division of Human Rights for Religious Discrimination. Now, I'm telling the story for the first time because... It, it's never been really that interesting or, or, or um, I don't know, it was just never that interesting, you know, at the, at the time. So I kind of I sat on, the, on the, uh, the story. But now I'm talking about it, right? So, so, so there I was in this class, and I was, a, I was a student asking questions, and they kicked me out for asking about the, the things that I, I talked about. Is, is it a religion? Is Shambhala Buddhism a religion? They always said, no, it's non-secular. It's all over their websites, right? Right? Shambhala Training, right out of the, right off their website, says, Shambhala Training is a series of contemplative workshops suited for, for both beginner and experienced meditators. The simple and profound technique of mindfulness awareness is based on a secular path of meditation. Right? So they, they hold themselves out there. Now, did I study a little bit or did I study a lot? No, I went all the way to the end of their training. Now, I'm also not, I'm, I'm, I, as I said, I went to Thailand and I studied the, the, uh, the original path of the Buddha, right, in Thailand, where, it, where Buddhism uh, made its way from India, right? And it's deep and it's interesting and it's, it's all over the place in Thailand, right? So I went there. And then when I came back, I studied all the way to the most, uh, to the end of, uh, Shambhala training. And okay, all right, listen. It, a lot of it, see, the Tibetans had it figured out. Right? In Tibet, right, they had, they had hundreds of years, maybe thousands, to figure out how meditation should be taught. And I got to tell you, they do a good job of it, right? They do, because they teach the, the ability to observe thought while you're fully awake. And it's something that is, has, is an invaluable tool that I've used uh, since, since then. So it's, is it a religion? No, it's not a religion, right? Is it, is it a... But, but they claim to be a religion, right? Because as, as Ethan Nickturn, right, one of their major teachers, the big, the big Ethan Nickturn says, right, right he's one of their, their star performers, their star... Uh, marketeers that goes out into the community and gives the talks about Shambhala meditation. Not Shambhala the religion, Shambhala meditation. And in, in his own words, he tells you that it's, 
they target low low hanging fruit people that don't have a religion people that would never sign up to be a religion and then slowly they 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 lure people in to take to, to, to sign up for their religion and pay extreme amounts of money. A lot of money, right? Some of these programs... See, I never paid really anything for any of it because I was a volunteer and I was the AV guy. I, would, I, I ran their sound system most of the time in these classes. I would set up the mics and I, you know, I would do whatever I could to help out. And I never paid to be in these classes. But I took all of them all the way to the end, right? Now, it's a wealthy, wealthy tradition, right? They own properties in Colorado at the Shambhala Mountain Center. Karma Cholin is another one. I believe it's up in Vermont or Massachusetts, wherever they are. Right? They, own, um, they own properties all over the place, right? So, mucho dinero, right? They, they're loaded, right? And <coughs> they don't pay tax. Why? Because they're a religion. They're a religion, right? See, that's the big part of it. Now, the sexual scandal and the meat palm, they're, they're going down. But if you really want to get them, you have to look at the, the taxation evasion, right? Because, first of all, it's a fraud, right? It is, it is a religion. But they hold themselves out to the public as a secular meditation center. And once in, they then use the laws and the, the taxation rules for a religion. So, based on that, it's a fraud. They're holding themselves out in a, in a fraudulent manner to the public to bring people into their, their religion, holding it out as a secular, non-religious organization. Um, so, is this a religion? What would be a definition of religion? This is where, the, for me, the conversation always gets really confusing because that's yeah. the part that's vague. Yeah. What, that word is very vaguely defined. And it usually comes down to the things everybody already assumes are a religion. I think this is an important marketing question, actually. Um, you, I was talking to Rinpoche about the idea of lowest hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Everybody is familiar with that. Like, what's the easiest to reach? Or who are the people who might get interested in a Dharma practice who aren't already interested? And I was reading an article that the fastest growing group of Americans uh, are called the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, -N oh. <laughs> which means that when asked uh, what their religion is, they say none. Right? Mm. So that's, that's, that's in the future the largest growing group. Now is that an atheist group? Uh, are they anti-religion? Who knows? But it's definitely uh, se seems to be the largest growing group. So if, if we call this uh, religion, it seems like you miss those people and then it seems like you also miss people who already have a religion once i got kicked out who came to my rescue students in the class right? i'm not going to read i'm not going to read their names but I'll, I'll give you so mr r was one of the teachers right and he said one once they heard that i was kicked out of the class no one knew why i was kicked out right they said i was a i was a, i was a problem there and i got a phone call and it was a big scandal i got recordings right? But it's, it's, it's not that interesting, really. It's really not that interesting. They kicked me out, and I, and I threw a case at them, and I got Discovery, right? And I'm going to read you that Discovery. I got, the, I got the file right here. If anybody wants, if anybody has something to add or wants more, Intel dropped, short happy life down below, right? So, so Mr. R was a teacher there, and he said, upon hearing that I was kicked out, I'm very sorry to hear this, Marcus, for what it's worth, Mr. C and I did not, the other teacher, did not find your presence in the class to be disruptive. And we made this known to the leadership of the center. Right? One. Number two. This is a, a student, uh, Miss A. I am shocked. Your presence in our class has been nothing but a gift and a pleasure. And my path has been deeply enriched for having been on it with you. Right? Number three, uh, one of the class coordinators, Mr. V. Hi, Marcus. I'm sorry to hear about this. I'm, I always appreciated your help and spirit. Hopefully, we can study again later. Right. Number four, Miss J. I'm horrified to hear you've been summonly tossed out of our class. 
that's not that's not what's with not being able to have a different opinion right i thought we were supposed to question things and think for ourselves you've always been extremely supportive and helpful to others at the center and i have personally always enjoyed our interactions yes you are opinionated i like that i did not think you've done anything objective in fact I can only recall you making one comment so far this class and thought it may may have referenced another tradition. I don't remember it being controversial. Not confrontational, not but I was kicked out for confrontation and allegations of of threats. Crazy shit, right? Miss B, another student. I am sorry to get this news. I will miss you in class. I always found your comments interesting and I enjoyed your presence. Five. Number six, Miss Mr. F. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear about this. I think it's I don't think it's fair to ban you from class or Shambhala. I did hear people were complaining that you were acting crazy <laughs> on Facebook. I don't think I think it freaked them out, right? Okay, so so that's six. I don't remember uh, even communicating on Facebook, but that's that's besides mine. It might have happened. So 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 there you have it, right? So I was summonly kicked out for challenging them on their tax code, on their uh, allegations of a, of a drunken guru who was enlightened, on the allegations of a uh, a practice involving a sixteen year old virgin. The sexual, again, the sexual allegations were secondary because most people there knew about it. And it wasn't just Meat Palm, right? It wasn't, Meat Palm actually, it wasn't that really known that the guru was a, was a horny dog, right? And, a, and an alcoholic. But it turns out he was. He's just like all the rest of them, right? Now, they promote alcoholism. They promote alcohol consumption, not alcoholism. That was a stretch. I take that back. But they do promote uh, alcohol consumption. In fact, one of their main, their other main students wrote a book on the Buddha walks into a bar, right? I, you know, he wrote he writes in his book about meditating on a, on a on a steak. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a fucking kook, a kook. You know, it's a cult, a uh, straight up cult. Uh, so. I mean, that was my experience there. I mean, I have a lot of other stories that I can contribute to it. But in my experience, the big one and the, the real downfall, the real thing people should be looking at is their tax evasion, where they hold themselves out to the public as a meditation center, Shambhala. But what they really are and always have been, and in the eyes of the law, is a straight-up religion. Now, is that in my words? Are they a religion in my words? No. New York State Division of Human Rights response says, when I, when I made my allegations, Mr. Al Mr. Conti's allegations of discrimination are unfounded. As a threshold matter, the center is not covered under Section 296 of the executive law because it is a Buddhist church, not a school or education corporation or association, and does not hold itself out to be non-sectarian. Right? Further, that, that completely contradicts everything that we've been talking about, right? That I've shown you. And in their in on their own website and in the words of their own key uh, teacher. It's the opposite, right? What they're saying here is the opposite of what they say in public. Further, Mr. Conti was asked not to return to the center as a direct result of his threatening and aggressive behavior. Right? Now I gave you examples of students in the class that said the opposite right so they're making it up right uh not for any discriminatory reason or his religious beliefs right they push you to join their religion right that was the fundamental argument in my claim is that if you don't join their religion and shut the hell up and do as they do as you're told in accordance with the religion get out right that's what that was my argument right for these reasons, and as a matter of law, the division should find no probable cause and should dismiss Conti's complaints, which they did, right? Pal, they won. 
right? They won their claim on religious discrimination because they are a religion, right? It's in the bylaws, right? But that's not what they tell their people. So there's the fraud. There lies the fraud. Yes, yeah, sexual predatorism and, and alcoholism and all those things are true. But the real thing is the fraud, how they hold themselves out to be a meditation center to lure in the low-hanging fruit and then try to stuff their religion down people's throats. So my name is Marcus Conti reporting on this breaking cult news. Peace out.